the book of Acts, chapter 18. And Father, we ask that you would add your blessing to the word that we're about to study. In Jesus' name, amen. After this, he, that is, Paul, left Athens and went to Corinth. Corinth was the sin capital of the Roman Empire. Paul has just left the uh, intellectual, the artistic capital, which was Athens, and now he has gone to the sin capital. Immorality was the lifestyle and also the religion of the people in Corinth. Lost souls who are deep in sin may not always need to be blasted. Perhaps sometimes they do. But they do need to know that there is forgiveness for them through Jesus Christ. And that's why Paul is in Corinth. Verse 2. And he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontius, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. Now, the Jews were stirring up rebellion in the city of Rome, so the emperor kicked them all out. And among the Jews who had to leave was uh, this couple, Aquila, and his wife Priscilla, to pick up and leave. In Christ, a forced change is not your world falling apart. It is God doing something new with you. And so, trust Him. That's what's going on here. Verse 3. And because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked, for by trade they were tent makers. Aquila and his wife set up a tent making business after they were forced to move to Corinth. And one day, Paul applied for a job with them, and he got hired. And we see here that God introduced these Christians to each other by their work. And it never would have happened if Aquila's family had not been forced from their home in Rome. Verse 4 And he argued in the synagogue on every Sabbath and persuaded Jews and Greeks. Paul made tents because he had to earn a buck. But his heart was in teaching the word of God. He would do both only for as long as he had to. I am sure he's not pleased with the fact that he has to make tents. But we all have to do things that we don't want to do. That's just the way it is in this messed up world. 5. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with preaching, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. So, when Silas and Timothy arrived, Paul was finally free to spend his time teaching, which is what God had called him to do. The unpleasant things in this life will pass if you are a Christian. 6. And when they opposed and reviled him, he shook out the garments, or his garments, and said to them, Your blood be upon your heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Paul gave the Israelites the truth. Went into the synagogue in Corinth, gave them the truth. He did his part. They rejected it. That's their business. And by shaking the dust, he was saying, Your condemnation is fault, not mine. A preacher who waters down the truth cannot shake the dust off of his feet, as Paul did. He cannot say to the people, your condemnation is all your fault. It is their fault, for sure. But it is that preacher's fault as well, for not warning them, for not giving them the truth he will share in their guilt. 7. <clears throat> and he left there and went to the house of a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. So Titus Justus was a Roman name. This man was a Gentile. 
It appears as if he was a convert to Judaism and now a convert to Christ. And now Paul, not welcome in the synagogue, sets up um, his ministry in the home of this Titus Justice. And God always provides the means to do what he wants us to do. It in his hands. 8. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord, together with all his household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no man shall attack you to harm you, for I have many people in this city. And he stayed a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. When you've been stoned, whipped, and beaten, for preaching Jesus as many times as Paul has been you might get just a little bit gun shy proclaiming the word of God in the sin capital of the Roman Empire and so God appears to Paul and encourages him gives him the word of God and Paul is encouraged he receives that encouragement and he receives the word and along with it the faith to persevere lesson for us believe God's word believe his promises and let it cause you to persevere in doing what is right and do not be moved by the circumstances verse 12 but when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia the Jews made a united attack upon Paul and brought him before the tribunal. The anti-Christian Jews were trying to the spread of Christianity before it even gets going. Gallio was an important Roman ruler. The Jews bring Paul before him. And if he rules that Christianity is against the law, that sets a precedent for the future. That's not very good. And that is what the Jews want to see happen. 13. They bring him before the uh, ruler and they say, This man is persuading men to worship God contrary to the law. It was against the law for someone to form a new religion in Rome. The Jews are telling Gallio that that is what this Paul is trying to do start a new religion called Christianity. It's against the law, they said. What he's doing, what he's preaching is it's against the law. Well, if it is if it is against the law for you to obey Christ, then you do not need to change. The law needs to change. Verse fourteen. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Galileo said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or vicious crime, I should have reason to bear with you, O Jews. Just as Paul is about to make his defense, Gallio makes it for him. He tells the Jews he isn't interested in their accusations. Verse 15. He continues, But since it is a matter of questions about words and names in your own law, see to it yourselves. I refuse to be a judge of these things. In other words, he ruled that Christianity was not a new religion, but rather just a, a part of their religion, Judaism. And that's a huge break for the early church. Because at least for a while, it's a legal religion, and the empire falls under the umbrella of Judaism. And so you hear that God is letting his church get a, a foothold in the empire. He got it going. And he has kept it going by his sovereign power for 2,000 years, just as he said it would. 16. And he drove them from the tribunal. And they all seized Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to this. Sosthenes was sympathetic to the Christians. And uh, as a result, 
the Jews vented their frustration on him because they didn't get the ruling they wanted from Galileo they vented their frustration on Sosthenes and if he wasn't a Christian here then evidently this beating helped to push him over the edge because later on in scripture he's called a Christian verse 18 after this Paul stayed many days longer and then took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria and with him Priscilla and Aquila at Centuria he cut his hair for he had a vow and Paul probably made a vow to God during his hard times this was a Jewish thing a vow was made and then they had 30 days to get to Jerusalem shave their head and offer whatever sacrifice they promised to God with their vow it is okay for us to make vows to God if we want to as Christians we have the freedom to do that but if it is made then it must be kept if it isn't it is sin and it must be confessed 19 and they came to Ephesus and he left them there but he himself went into the synagogue and argued with the Jews they all arrive in the city of Ephesus and Paul's companions stayed on the ship while he went into the synagogue and told the Jews about Christ he just had a little time and so he just wanted to buzz in there himself quickly verse 20 when they asked him to stay for a longer period he declined Paul he couldn't stay God answered some prayer that was connected to his vow and he had to get to Jerusalem to offer the proper sacrifices before those 30 days were up 21 but on taking leave of them he said I will return to you if God wills and he set sail from Ephesus you can tell Paul was in a hurry or he never would have left these people who were interested in hearing the word of God and so he only had a little time to spend with these people and he spent it he used it spending a little time with someone is better than nothing and it can make a big difference verse 22 when he had landed at Caesarea he went up and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch after arriving in Israel Paul makes his way to Jerusalem and he no doubt tells the church all about his second missionary journey and after that he heads back up to his home church in the city of Antioch 23 after spending some time there he departed and went from place to place through the region of Galatia and Phrygia strengthening all the disciples and actually this verse verse 23 is a summary of the first part of Paul's third missionary trip which in total took about four years so Paul went back to those churches that he had established earlier and he strengthened all those new Christians 24 now a Jew named Apollos a native of Alexandria came to Ephesus he was an eloquent man well versed in the scriptures Apollos we are introduced to this man shows up in Ephesus Aquila and Priscilla were left by Paul to minister Apollos knew the Word of God and he was a good teacher it's never a waste of time to study and learn Holy Scriptures we we need to hear what it says and so will others who God brings our way it was not a waste of time for Apollos to <coughs> learn the scriptures and be so well versed in the Bible as we will see verse 25 he had been instructed in the way of